Since the Sandbox fans, we're here back with the positional rankings. Halfway through the defensive positions, we gave you the safeties, we gave you the corners. I'm going to start it off great with a couple of honorable mentions. We're doing the linebackers here today. Top 10, we just went through, like you said, safeties, corners. A couple names I want to mention. Again, for the little bit that he played, Matt Milano had an excellent year. Devin White had a great year. He missed my rankings. Blake Cashman's another name I want to mention. So one of those guys on Houston that really came into his own this year. Jeremiah Wosu Koromora had an excellent year. But you snubbed him. But I snubbed him, Steve. I snubbed him. I, I did I'm looking at the you I love give me some of that. <laughs> I did. I love that. I love Bro. that. I snubbed him. I'm looking at this. I think there are some dudes that really held their defenses down. Whereas I think when I look at the Browns, it was a very collective effort. He's eleven, right? But I gotta go with here at number ten. Same face. Old play, Steve. He might have not been great in pass coverage, but this dude was pivotal in stopping the run with 183 total tackles this year, three and a half sacks. Oh, the disrespect, bro. The disrespect. Bobby Wagner is at 10, Steve. I don't I know. know We're going to see some of You think that's disrespectful, I Bobby think, Wagner? Dude, 10. 183 total tackles is the most we've seen in the season in, in maybe ever. Steve, but I'm looking at some of these guys like – they play better in the pass game than Bobby Wagner does. Bobby Wagner was an excellent run stuffer. Steve, I got him here at 10. I don't want you to tell me where you got I'm him. I'm not going to tell I you. I don't want you to. I just, I just want you to know that Bobby Wagner still made the list on the Rams, and that was a horrible season for him. At this point in his career, over 33 years old, for this dude to still have an 183 total tackles and keep that defense a top 12 unit, I really do feel like you're disrespecting Bobby. Oh, come on. Bobby, I love you. Come on. Don't hate me. But I got you here at 10. I think there are just some names that I'd like to give some recognition to. Bobby Wagner, you're going to make this list every year. But I got you here at 10 this year. But you're not doing I think you said, justice at 10, though. Listen, listen, what? Listen, I get it. He has to step up. Jordan Brooks gets hurt for part of the season. He has to step up. I think that also a Tributes to the fat number of tackles that he got. But I still got him here at 10. Listen, if you're on this list, that means you're one of the best players at your position in the entire NFL. But so listen, look. regardless of any other stat specific for the linebackers, if any Patriot linebacker had 183 total tackles, they would be top three with no other question asked. Yeah, fuck it, fuck yeah. That's exactly what fuck I'm yeah. saying. Why not? Why not? You know what? You know what? I got a guy here that was just for you. He's off the list. He's off the list. He ain't just for me. His numbers do that. Oh, oh come yeah. on. All right. Oh, listen, man. like we go back. Back to your eyes tell the story. The, Bobby <laughs> Wagner, your eyes told a great story. Or my eyes told a great story based off of you. Stop Listen, it. man. Listen, stop I don't it. know what we're doing. Bobby <laughs> Wagner. Bobby <laughs> Wagner. Got you here at 10. 183 total tackles. He's still got the game, man. Just missed on my list. Not not your spew or, or your, your spiel of, of eight other guys that could have came up with another list. One, Robert Spillane. Steve. I think you disrespected him. Ah, I think you disrespected him. Okay, no <laughs> name. I'm all about. Look, I, I'm cool with taking that disrespect because I think he deserved recognition, but not over 183 total tackles. Not with some of the other impact that these dudes have had. And I feel like consistency is a large part of that. I feel like a large reason why Roberts Spillane had such a great year is because nobody else was there to make the tackles. It, but that plays into like so how important of a factor he is for his team, though. Whereas like. And again, Bobby Wagner is a part of a team that is very well established. Like that defense is pretty good. Now I go get they had some bad points, but they get a lot of studs on that defense. And that's why I think it's more impressive because for you to get 200 tackles with with six other Pro Bowlers on that defense, you're making a fucking difference. But at 10, this dude was definitely. I feel like 10 is a very respectable spot for him. Back end of my list, I feel like if he's on a team. By himself, he might get a lot more love and recognition, but that's not the case. We're talking Dre Greenlaw here. A lot of people might be like, dude, who the hell is Dre Greenlaw? Because the San Francisco 49ers defense is absolutely star-studded with a bunch of talent. But Dre Greenlaw, 120 total tackles, one and a half sacks, four pass deflections, four and a half tackles for loss, and two interceptions. But I just feel like being able to have the presence of two guys that can actually run like a 3-4 defense or whatever type of defense that you want to run. Like, those two dudes can sit there and they can handle business, coverage, tight ends, like slot wide receivers, sideline to sideline, making the tackles to stop the run play. Dre Greenlaw is absolutely a dude that's always rumored or flirted with this conversation. 
And I feel like with the way that this year worked out, Dre Greenlaw deserves this recognition. If you want us to sit here and argue that Robert Spillane should be in there over Dre Greenlaw, I'm 100% here for that conversation. And I think that there's a lot of arguments to back that up. I, I think so as well. And I, again, Dre Greenlaw had an excellent year. But listen, we have, we're bringing you the best 10. There are just because you're not on the list doesn't mean you're not one of the top linebackers in the position. It's hard to filter some of these names out. If you're on this list, you're special. Dre Greenlaw is special. Again, he's right around this top 10 list of mine. I just didn't have him in here. And keep in mind, we're talking about 32 teams. The fact that we have to choose a third of this list and there's two guys on my list from the same team really shows you how tremendous those guys are. Yep. I mean, this is a deep position, man. This is a really deep position. So coming in here at number nine, this guy had to step up on a defense that they had their struggles. They played well. It's a really mixed bag with them at some points throughout the year. But TJ Edwards I had here with 155 total tackles, 91 by himself, two and a half sacks. Two fumble recoveries, one forced, three picks and seven pass deflections. He played just as good in the pass as he did the run. So I got TJ Edwards here at number nine. And I do feel like I thought his play was going to diminish a little bit going to a team that he just kind of got handed the bag, Mm -hmm. especially coming off the year that he had with the Eagles. But I was actually impressed with his season, and it's good to see that that defense is relevant in Chicago. And I don't know if we want to credit Eberflus for that because that dude was on the hot seat for Mm -hmm. a large part of the year. TJ Edwards just missed my list, but definitely was a name in consideration. Nine for me. Not sure if he's on your list. New name to to the list. Ernest Jones here, the Rams linebacker. So this is a dude, you know, you're talking about the Rams team that's really finding these dudes. Like in the in the mid to, to late parts of the draft, coming across, you know, undrafted free agents. And that's how this team has really kind of been rebuilt to their I don't want to say Super Bowl level but contending level the fact that the Rams were in the playoffs when a lot of people had written them off in that division specifically giving credit to you know the Seahawks and and what they could have been this year but Ernest Jones here with 145 total tackles four and a half sacks six pass deflections and 14 tackles for loss absolutely big season coming out of him and I expect that number to continue to grow as long as, you know, that Rams team stays hot. Steve, love the take. No Ernest Jones in here, but again, he's one of those fringe guys that you can argue can absolutely make this list. Where I have at number eight, a guy with another player at his position that played really well, and he still pulled out with 151 total tackles. C.J. Mosley makes this list for the second year in a row in his resurgence on the New York Jets, he has played incredible, Steve. Seven pass deflections, also had a pick this year. Again, just a half sack, but he's got two forced fumbles. He is really, when you look at this Jets defense, he's the, like you said, it's the only reason Salah still got his job. This defense played incredible. This These defensive rankings could be filled with New York Jets, and they probably will be. But Well, they probably are. They probably, they are, right? Realistically, like, they already are, right? We have Sauce in there for the last episode. We got C.J. Mosley in here. We might have another name coming up even in this list, Steve. And then you get to the D-lineman. There's a big dude on that D-line that you really got to consider as well. Who, but Solomon I can see- Thomas? <laughs> oh, stop. <laughs> stop it, man. Watching too much hard knocks. <laughs> C.J. Mosley here at number eight, 151 total tackles with another absolute stud on that same position on your team. It's nothing to bat an eye at. C.J. Mosley did make my list last year, Mm -hmm. but this year, same spot, we have a different Jets defender. Wow. And and we're going to talk about the all-pro linebacker from the New York Jets, all right, C.J. Mosley? Sure, sure, but if if you're going with the name that I think you're going with, it might be low, Steve. Oh, okay, well, at eight, Quincy Williams. Low! (laughs) (laughs) We love that, but... Very questionable. Why'd you double fist that? (laughs) I'm getting fucking exposed on this episode. (laughs) My God. Quincy Williams, all pro season. A lot of people are asking, who the hell is Quincy Williams? Well, yeah, that is Quincy Williams, bro. And 15 tackles for loss, 139 total tackles, two sacks, two forced fumbles. But these numbers just continue. Interception, 10 pass deflections, 14 tackles for loss. Out of Quincy Williams. This was a dude last year. Nobody knew his name. He was just Quentin Williams' brother. Yep. Now he's an all-pro on that Jets defense. Regardless of whatever the scenario may be, Quincy Williams deserves a lot of recognition. This dude is an all-pro, deserves to be on the list. Steve, I'm going to get to him later in the rankings, but I can't even tell you the number because it's, I think there's a little bit of separation on where it's it is. Good. It's all good. 
at seven, this is where I have Robert Spillane to do that on a defense where, again, the only other guy that I really go gung-ho for on that team is Max Crosby. You have Spillane stuffing the run. He's playing a whole lot of different roles in this year. We have three interceptions, four pass deflections, on our three and a half sacks on a Raiders defense that we didn't think was going to be anything. All of a sudden, Antonio Pierce comes in there, and he really helps form that defense up nicely. Robert Spillane is a key piece on that defense as to why they're able to hold teams to low scores in that back half of the season. Absolutely. Robert Spillane here at seven. Absolutely. I love it, and I think he's going to be you know a household name, especially on this list for – you know, years to come. But at seven, we're going to get spicy. We're going to get different. Oh, boy. This is, this is one of those guys that you're like, is he a safety? Is he a linebacker? Is this the Jabril Preppers all over again? Not quite, but maybe. This is where we have Jeremiah Uwosu Koromoa. And, yeah, I said that right. And, yeah, this dude deserves to be on the list, especially at seven. When you're talking about a dude that's a little bit of that, that lighter build at the linebacker position, fucking give you 22 tackles for loss. The biggest number at the linebacker position. 121 total tackles, three and a half sacks, a forced fumble, two interceptions, and six pass deflections. This is what the linebacker position is going to look like for years to come. Yep. A dude this mold that's built and can move like a safety, but is just as strong as a linebacker is. People were questioning this dude out of Dame, and they're like, oh, man, like, what is he going to be in the NFL? Like, is this dude actually going to have, like, a role? Are we just valuing his speed too much? And the Browns have made a way to make that fit seamlessly, and it definitely took some time, but that's okay. It doesn't all need to happen their rookie year for them to be successful players. This dude is an absolute unit. This dude is an absolute problem. You're talking about stars on three levels of that defense. Smith and Garrett. You talk about Cormoa here. You talk about Denzel Ward on the back end with Greg Newsom in that cornerback room. So this defense is ready to go. If that offense can keep some consistency at the quarterback position and just put up half the points that they put up this year, they're going to come in second, maybe second place in that division next year. Yep. I. They really, really might it, Steve. <laughs> Um, never mind. Never mind. Okay, okay. But you're gonna let Anthony enjoy the Super Bowl before you can I mean, start getting on, all come crazy. Come on, we're, we're we're flock up. Come on, flock up for this week. Come on, guys. <laughs> Number six, Steve. Your boy, Bobby yep. Okereke. Double down. Six At six, on. I mean, absolutely stellar season. On, it looked a little shaky after week three, the first half against the Cardinals, but the defense ended up coming to form. Bobby Okereke had an awesome year. Bobby so, Okereke didn't miss a snap the entire season. Unbelievable player. We're looking at 149 total tackles, two and a half sacks, four forced fumbles, Steve. Ten pass deflections, two interceptions. This guy had a hell of a year. 14 tackles for loss. Unbelievable. Unbelievable year. He's a cornerstone piece that you have to continue to build around. Yeah. So I got him at six. You got him at six. I honestly think like him, Xavier McKinney, Kayvon, David L. Dexter Lawrence, like those, those are the guys. And it, it's been a long time to be able to say that, like, hey, like we have those dudes on defense. Tay Banks, absolutely in that conversation. That's good. Now we need that to be consistent. The reason why the Giants didn't get their, to their goals and aspirations this year wasn't because the defensive side of the ball. We need to understand that, regardless of the Dable, the Wink slander, and everything that's been going on. Like, we're talking about grown ass adults that literally are, are, are doing like all this, this back and forth kid shit. Like, Let's grow the fuck up. This is the NFL. Like, if a dude's expressing himself on the sidelines like that, and I'm not saying it's right for Dable to talk like that, but you know what's demanded and expected in the NFL. If you're not giving that, why should anybody be okay or happy with that? That dude's job is on the line. This is his first head coaching mm -hmm. opportunity. I'd be fucking bullshit, too. I might not look like a red Mario meatball, if, like, displaying that if that was me, but, <laughs> but that's just who Brian Dable is. So, Bobby O'Karake was a steal from the Colts, was just talking about, you know, that Colts defense a little bit earlier with Lou, and we're going to talk about them a little bit later on, but an absolute building block for the Giants going forward. At five, I can't believe this dude's been in the name four years in a row. Fouyasaid Alula Khan. No matter the team, no matter how much talent surrounding him, this dude is a tackle machine, and he's always healthy, which is crazy. 173 total tackles, two and a half sacks, 12 tackles for loss, a forced fumble, two fumble recoveries, an INT, a touchdown, and six pass deflections. 
I know the Jaguars have a lot of good pieces on that defensive side, and I know that they're going to continue to try and build that. And with the change that they're going to have at the defensive coordinator position, I'm expecting the defensive unit to really carry this team. Trayvon Walker, Josh Allen. You talk about a Darius Williams on the back end with who was the top corner that we talked about last year that was in it from the Jags? Tyson Campbell. Tyson Campbell. Like that's exactly what I'm saying. So this is another team. Every single position has players with the comp with the great compliment on the opposite side of the ball. So no excuses for the Jaguars going forward. Try to tell you that they weren't a 13 win team. Next year, no matter how good they are and when they do win that division, unless the Colts really pull that upset, it's not going to be for 13 wins. I think the only team in the, in the foreseeable future that'll sniff that their team might be the Houston Texans. It really might be. And you know what? I'm here for it, man. I'm a Texans guy next year, so it don't matter. <laughs> but regardless, <laughs> Aluacons, I had Aluacon at four. Okay. So you touched on it a lot. I don't want to put too much more out there, but really, really impressive season. Back-to-back, again, 111 total tackles by himself. Yeah. Those are solo tackles. That's more than some of the actual linebackers have total tackles. Mm-hmm. It's more than Devin White had total tackles. It's more than Blake Cashman had total tackles. And these are names of people that stars. are just missing the yeah. list. Yeah. Oluwakon with 173 total tackles and 111 by himself. That is so impressive, Steve. I had him at four. My five. You mentioned Indy. It's not Shaq Leonard. It's Zaire Franklin, Steve. Zaire Franklin had an unbelievable year. 172 total tackles. 179. 100, 100, sorry, 179 total tackles. 107 of them by himself. A sack and a half. Two forced fumbles. This guy had a really, really good year when he needed to step up because Shaq Leonard kind of just went bye-bye, ends up going to a different team, and he is a cornerstone of that defense. What a year. Six pass deflections and 11 tackles for loss to add in there, you know, with Zaire Franklin, who I have at three. So not too far off where you had him, but I believe Zaire absolutely deserved, you know, that that top recognition. This dude's a, a, a baller, and, you know, sometimes it doesn't all translate right away. And that's, like I said, with Koromoa. That's okay. This dude understood the responsibility that defense had vacant for a long time. Even with, you know, Darius Leonard there, this dude was battling injuries for three years and was just collecting the check. And I know, like, he obviously wanted to be on the field. But the play that Zaire Franklin really gave this year and where he came from, like, absolutely out of nowhere, was a large part and a large reason why that Colts team was able to put up 20 points a game and win many ball games with a backup quarterback for so long. If this team continued to average 20 points through the entire season and you know had a little bit more consistency at the running back position, I really think that the Colts might have made a little bit more noise than some of the other ASC teams that we saw in those playoff spots. Mm-hmm. Love it. Steve, who did you have at four? At four, this, is, this might be a little bit low. Repeat name on the list. This is where I have Fred Warner. All pro. I know that this is a guy that, you know, you can debate here for the for the one spot, but it it was just different. Like when when you view when you view Fred Warner, I don't want to say that that you're basing him on different statistics than a Bobby Wagner or a Roquan Smith or anything like that. Because they're not, because they're playing the same exact position. Mm-hmm. But I do think that Fred Warner's skill set is a little bit different than theirs. Where he's an all pro, like he's definitely getting that recognition. But this might be the best cover linebacker that we've ever seen in the NFL, like ever. Yep. And I know that there's been a lot of great linebackers, and I'm not trying to sit here and disrespect a Ray Lewis, who is an absolutely mm-hmm. great, a Brian Urlacher, or like, you know, just many, many names that were staples to that position. This dude is revolutionary, yep. revolutionizing that position. A 90 pro football focus grade, the absolute highest at the linebacker position. You can talk about the total tackles and the sacks, but just, you know, with the coverage here, four interceptions, four forced fumbles, 11 pass deflections, absolutely crazy. That allows a Dre, a Dre Greenlaw to play a little bit more free. That allows Nick Bosa and Chase Young to be defended one-on-one at the line of scrimmage. That allows Charvarius Ward to line up with their best corner and not have to pull guys out of position to help with that. The 49ers defense is an extremely established unit. I'm not rooting for this team to win the Super Bowl, 
But with the roster that they've had for the past three years and what they'll have going into next year, if this team falls short, this might be the biggest disappointment in NFL history. I That's a great way to put it because you look at them. They've been Super Bowl favorites all of this year. They have been con- thought of as contenders for Super Bowl for the past couple of years. Like They got to the dance a couple of years ago. They just got outplayed. But, I mean, this team, they need success and they need it now. And success for them is winning a Super Bowl. It's not just getting there. Yeah. Steve at three. This is where I have Quincy Williams. Okay. Quincy Williams like had an spot. unbelievable season. You talked about 139 total tackles, 95 by himself, two sacks, two forced fumbles. Again, a pick, 10 pass deflections. I mean, he does it all. And this is from a guy that last year you're looking and you're like, he's just, like you said, Quinnen Williams' younger brother. He's not Quinnen Williams' younger brother anymore. He's an all pro linebacker on a team where there's a ton of great defensive players another at his own position in my rankings it's just what a year from quincy williams Dyer franklin was my three two is bobby wagner two is bobby wagner i had this guy at one and i switched it because i think the guy that i put at one just you mentioned it he revolutionized the position at two here steve this is and again it's like a 1a 1b thing but i have to ask you though because you talked about this dude, Roquan, is the best linebacker all year. So what came to your rankings in that switch? So what's up with that? I have Roquan here at two. And I had him at one like 10 hours ago. <laughs> like 10 hours ago, I had him at one. And I just look back to Fred Warner all season long, and I get Roquan Smith did it all season long. But when I think of when the Niners started 5-0, and I looked at Fred Warner and said, I have never seen a linebacker play this way this well. You look at Ray Lewis, he played a little bit of a different game than Fred Warner. But like you mentioned, Fred Warner is revolutionizing the position. He is. I have never seen a linebacker that can cover like that. I just don't think that Fred Warner, as great of a player as he is, has the impact that Roquan does for that defense, the number one defense in the NFL that we need to make sure is, is stated part of that conversation. This I year. absolutely understand that, but I'll use a little bit of what we talked about for Bobby Wagner, for Fred Warner to do what he did on a defense that's that good. It started with Fred Warner, and I get that the Ravens' defense is the best in the NFL. I understand that. And Roquan Smith is that building block around it. He's why the defense is that way. But we talk about all these names in the 49ers, and I don't know that these names are these names without what Fred Warner does to allow them to play their game. Yeah, I mean, fair enough. I just just feel like that there's a lot more stars on the defensive side of the ball for the 49ers that I don't want to say that you wouldn't notice it, but if Fred Warner was to miss a game, Dre Greenlaw plays in his spot, Chase Young can still get two sacks, Nick Bosa can still get two sacks, and Trevarius Wall can still walk up your dude. You take Roquan Smith out of that defense, that's not the number one unit. But you're asking all those other guys on the defense to do other things that may expose that defense, whereas if Fred Warner's in there, you don't ask them to do anything other than the one thing that they need to do because Fred Warner's got the rest covered. Who do you guys think is the best linebacker in the NFL? It's 1A, 1B. Let us know. Since the Sandbox fans, that is going to wrap things up for our positional rankings at the linebacker position with the defensive line to come. We have the offensive side of the ball trailing that. I hope everybody enjoys their Super Bowl weekend, assuming that this is when this episode is going to drop Mm -hmm. out to you guys. And you guys know the deal. Go check out our YouTube to watch the content. You can stay listening. Make sure to drop us a review. If you guys like the merch that we got on, well, the merch that I got on. I, make, I fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> make sure make sure you guys go and get that at sandbox.net. Peace, love, five stars, nothing less.